Good morning and welcome to Coffee Walk. It's a classic car day. We've got two really cool R codes, Fords, not Mopars, but any time you say R code is usually very substantial. Both 1969s. We're going to hit on an R code Mach 1 and an R code Torino, show you some of the differences in the cars, how to look at them, and then show how rare they are. And one of them is extremely rare. Actually, they're both extremely rare, so come on back. This 69 Arco Mach 1 Fastback, we actually found in Paris, Texas, and it was special ordered and delivered new into Mount Pleasant, so it's been in East Texas its whole life. Now, when I walked up on the car, it looks kind of rough, but being a Texas car, you hope some things are solid. So the first thing I did is I got underneath it, checked the frame rails. They're good front and rear. Torque boxes are good. And then you want to walk up and see. The first thing you look at when you're looking at an R-code is see if it's got the heavy-duty shock towers. This car does. And then from there, you want to start checking your numbers, see what you've got. What I was really surprised at is this car still has the factory buck tag on it, which is right here, which is the build details of the car. It has the options on it, and it also has a serial number. Really cool that it's there. Now, these cars have got numbers on both inner fenders. Usually, the one on the driver's side, you can see. But this one, we had to pull the fender back a little bit to see it. It was there. We have, don't have it pulled back now. And we pulled that fender back. And that number's on it too. So both inner fenders are still original. Firewall's solid. Then I opened the door. It was a pleasant surprise to see that the door warranty tag is still here. So this you can tell what the car left the factory as. So you've got 63C, which tells you that it is either a sports roof or Mach 1, so it's a fastback. You got T5, which is candy apple red. You got 3W, which is white interior. It's kind of threw me for a loop because red, white interior cars are pretty rare. And it also has a sport deck rear seat, which is the full down rear seat, which is really a neat option. So then as we roll down, you see this uh, DSO code 61, which would be Dallas, the closest major DSO to Mount Pleasant. And then you've got a code A and a 6. Now, A, I was surprised to see that because that's a 350 to 1, which is not a bad gear ratio for an R code, but it's a conventional. Conventional means it's an open carrier, so it's not positive track. Now, I've talked to the guys at the plant. They said a lot of times the reason that happens is because they ran out of the track locks. That's probably what happened on this car. And you have a six, which is a close ratio four speed. Now, we also checked to see if the original VIN tag's on it, which it is. So from there, I knew it had a real R-code car that's definitely worth building. Super rare. Now, just how rare is it? Well, I don't know when I first buy one. I have to wait a while sometimes. I usually get the Marty report. And the first report you get in from them is called the Deluxe Report, which just kind of gives you a quick breakdown of the big numbers of these cars. They were 1,500 candy apple red, but that includes all the Mach 1s. 6,473 428 cars. That includes all the Mustangs. 3,743 from Dallas. 9,218 with the AM8 track. So, if you read this, it doesn't really look like it's just crazy rare. But the other thing is it will also break down and confirm what I saw on the door tag, those options to be true. So candy apple red, white nick vinyl, Dallas TSO, 350 conventional rear end, four speed close ratio transmission. So, but if you're patient and you wait, they have what's called a statistical analysis. They'll go back through and do a lot of numbers crunching just to see how many were built like this. So we'll just go real quickly down here. 1,300 were candy up a red with a blackout hood, which is pretty common, but only 155 of those had the white knit vinyl Mach 1 bucket seats. And only 25 of those had an AM8 track radio, and 11 of them had the sport deck rear seat, which is the full down rear seat. And only two of these cars were produced with power ventilation. Now, power ventilation. What's power ventilation? Very odd. Unfortunately, the dash isn't in here. They had a power ventilation set up in front of this that had a solenoid that when you went down the road and you pushed it, it opened up and forced air right up here in the center of the dash, which part of it's still here. So this ducting right here, which I'll have Tyler bring the camera in, is what's left of the power ventilation. And you still had the controller look like it was air conditioning, but it wasn't air conditioning. It was a $40 option. Hardly anybody ever ordered it. So this is one of two cars that has that. Crazy, crazy rare. Of course, it's got Magnum 500s on it. Um, the car looks rough, but it's actually a very good platform to start the build because it's never been in salt. Uh, the floors do have some rust, but that's an easy repair. 
Which way would you go with this car? Would you resto mod it and roll up and say, wow, you took a real R code and resto modded it? Or would you go back to stock? That's something you got to ponder. Next, we've got a really crazy rare, another Torino. In the past, if you guys are watching the videos, we had a 70 Cobra Super Cobra Jet Drag Pack close ratio four speed Torino, which I believe to be the best original in the world. The current over now has had three national judges look at it. Looks like it probably is. Now, this one popped up. This is a 69. It was in the middle of nowhere. I literally chased this car for three months. There's some guys out there that spent a tremendous amount of time helping me save this car to you guys. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry we couldn't go film this. It was just too hard to set up the way things are going right now with COVID. But what I knew was special about this car is when I got the picture of the door warning tag and the car, you know, the paint on the car is too good to be factory paint. And when you come look at the door warranty tag, the color code is A. Wow, when you see A on a 69 or 70, that's raven black. That's like a holy grail color for a Boss 9, which we have had one or two of those in that color. Now, but in a Torino, seeing a raven black one, I, I can't remember ever seeing one. So that got me really excited. And then we, we go ahead and go down the trim, on the, the trim it says WA. Well, I've got most of these codes memorized. I have no idea what WA is. So then we've got our axle is an S, which that was an A350 to one conventional, and the S is a 350 to one track lock, which is definitely what you really want with an R code 428, especially with a four speed. Just make the car come on the hole so much better having positive track. And then of course the transmission is six for close ratio. Now, what's WA? If you'll look, it's black knit instead of just regular black vinyl, but it's bench seat. More of that in a minute to see how rare that is. These designs of these cars are just absolutely beautiful. Trino GT, I mean, it's just so many cool styling cues on this car, but let's look under the hood and see if this one's got a motor. Now this car had been sitting for about 12 or 13 years. We really haven't had time to do much to it yet, but boom, there it is, R code 428. Now those of you that know these cars really well, the first thing you say is, well, it's supposed to have a cast iron intake. You're correct, these did come with a cast iron intake, but what's really neat is over the counter, Ford made the aluminum intake, which is our police interceptor intake, and this car's got it. Didn't have it from the factory, but somebody put it on aftermarket. Now, Again, and this car looks like it was probably was just ordered and built to race. No power brakes, no power steering, police interceptor intake, big Holly carburetor, and they have changed. They had to move the oil filter up here because of the headers. So again, we got our regular report on the car that shows there was only 40 Torinos that were black. Wow. 582 of the 428, so you automatically see how much rare an Arco Trino is than a Mustang. Much, much rare. But this is what's exciting here. 582 of the 428 cars had a four speed close ratio. And actually it says here that 57 were Raven Black, but only one had a black knit vinyl bench seat. It's a one off car. That is so cool. Here's what really got my blood going on this car when he sent me the VIN number. Long time ago, I used to own the Lawman, which is the Super Boss 429, which was actually the second Lawman built because the first one that Vietnam got crushed. What a lot of people don't know is the serial number on that car is actually 429, and there's a reason for that. Carol Shelby had pulled that car aside, wanted to save it for himself. They called and said, we've got to have that car. We've got to turn it into Lawman Super Boss 2 because the first one got crashed and the troops are going to be upset. Well, guess what? He let him do it. That was 429 put to side. Now, the serial number on this car is 428. The last three digits are 428. I don't have the records on it. Usually somebody, an exec or somebody did this for themselves or saved it. I can't prove that right now, but that's really, really neat. So if you'll see the last digits of the serial number are 428. Now this car, it does run and drive right now, but it needs a lot of service, a lot of work, but it's a very, very cool car, super rare. So there you have it, two Ford 69 R codes, which again are 428 Cobra Jet cars. Let's point out something here that I hadn't seen before. 
and these are I this car had been parked for 12 or 13 years I don't remember when Craiger made them but Craiger has a copy of the Magna 500s actually looks pretty cool but anyways you guys please like tag share and follow have a great day go fast and have fun